Good morning and good to have all our in-person students here and also our online students. Uh, there's Viku and Arilla. I think uh, Viku is from Nagaland and we have Arilla also. She says she's from Nagaland. And Prabhu is, uh, I don't know from which place Prabhu is, Prabhu Manikam. So I'm assuming Prabhu Manikam is from Tamil Nadu. OK, yes. Uh, the surname Manikam is <laughs> from Tamil Nadu. OK, so welcome, uh, all of you. Can one of you lead us in uh, prayer before we begin class this morning? Anyone wants to lead us in prayer? You can come up in, uh, in front here and speak in the mic so our online students also uh, can hear. Anyone like to pray? Come. Lord, thank you for this day. Um, God, uh, as we are going to dive into your word, I pray that... Um, we would learn more of you and we'll learn something new today and that um, you help Pastor Selena to speak to us and that it would penetrate through our hearts and that um, you would be changed by it. Thank you, Jesus, that uh, we would be motivated and inspired by your word. Thank you, Lord, for everything in you. I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, um, Arilla. Welcome, uh, Nina, as well as joined online class. So welcome, Nina. Okay, so we'll begin. Um, last class, we were looking at the nine guideposts, okay? Um, in this course, uh, full uh, Minister's Foundation, uh, we are going to be looking at three uh, APC publications. Um, the first one that we are looking at is uh, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. And in this uh, publication, we are basically going to be um, understanding or uh, receiving um, knowledge or revelation how to find God's will for our lives okay so what are the nine guideposts anyone remembers okay the first one we saw was recognize the general teaching or instruction from God's word second one okay recognize the seeds in your life Okay, and the third one, the stirring within. Okay, so um, God has given us seeds. What are seeds? What are the seeds in your life? He said, recognize the seeds in your life. So what are the seeds? Your gifts, dreams, your talents, okay? Uh, prophecies that were spoken about you, okay? So all of this help you to um, understand and know what is God's um, leading, guiding in your life, what is his plan and purpose for your life. What is this recognize the steering within? OK. Nina says there is a, a you know, you're compelled to do something. Um, it's not just an emotional stirring when you hear something, when you see something, uh, you know, uh, God is stirring your heart up uh, to do something in that area, whether it is, um, whether it is for uh, underprivileged children or whether it's for uh, youth who are, you know, who perishing or uh, whether it is for um, adults who, uh, you know, who are lost without knowing the gospel. So you want to be an evangelist or you have a burden for, you know, certain places uh, that God is burdening you to go as a missionary uh, or you have this great passion or desire that people know the truth. So you want to teach. So just a basic stirring in your heart. But the stirring is not something that is emotional. Uh, emotional is something that you feel very bad about and then you know you kind of uh, uh, don't think about it later on or it doesn't uh, uh, stir up your emotions again but um, you know this is a compelling which leads you into action to doing something um, after you are really uh, compelled to do it or you're something very passionate um, about okay so go we're going to look at the fourth one recognize the grace of God yes How come? Yes. Okay. Uh, 
uh, so uh, how, how was okay uh, god used esther's beauty so we we might think beauty is very worldly but uh, how did how was that a seed um was because god took her at the right time at the right place there and you know mordecai tells her to go to the king when you know when she becomes the queen and um, you know haman is um, uh, you know gives out this edict that um, and fools the king and tries to get him to sign that all the jews on on this day you know will uh, uh, will be killed so mordecai is very um, sad and you know in um, the jewish uh, people when they are mourning uh, they put uh, ash on their heads and they sit in sackcloth and um, you know ever since um, Esther became the queen Mordecai used to sit at the king's gate because he would always inquire about um, about Esther and so when Esther looks and sees that uh, her uncle Mordecai is uh, you know, wearing sackcloth and putting ashes on his head. So he, she finds out and then he says, you know, um, this is what is the, the king has passed this edict and it's because of this wicked Haman. And he tells her, you go to the king. So she tells him that, you know, the king hasn't called me for a long time. And you know what happens if you go to the king's presence without uh, the king's permission. So I, I don't have an opportunity to go to the king. So Mordecai sends message to Esther through uh, her servant saying, you know, um, you know, who knows that God has brought you in this position for such a time as this. And she, she's and he tells her, if you don't go, God will bring deliverance for the Jews from to some other means or to someone else. So, you know, Esther says, OK, we well, let's fast and pray for three days and then um, I'll go into the king's presence. So then she fasts and prays. And on the third day, you know, she dresses up very beautifully and she goes and stands in before the, you know, the king's throne room. And he's so you know, enthralled by her beauty that he just stretches out his scepter, which means that, you know, you're pardoned, even though I didn't call you in my presence. And then, you know, he asks her, what is your wish? He's so enthralled by her beauty, he's willing to give her half the kingdom, you know. So uh, God can use some things that we think is worldly to, uh, you know, as a, um, as a seed to minister to others. So it can be even your voice you know, um, singing or it, uh, I know there's a, a lady who comes to our church at Central, APC Central, and uh, just, she has a lovely smile, a very beautiful lady, has a lovely smile, and through her smile, she just once shared the gospel to somebody and they accepted Jesus. They asked her, you know, um, you always see you smiling, what's the secret? She says, there's nothing else, it's just Jesus, and then she just shares and that, so you never know, you know, these are things that God uses in your life, so it was a beauty of Esther that, you know, they chose the beautiful virgins to take them into the king's presence uh, to become the next queen. And um, and again, of course, it was, you know, God, we look at the grace of God that, you know, enables us um, uh, to give us favor um, for the purposes that he has called and how he empowers us in that uh, calling and the favor that he's given us through the gifts that he empowers us uh, to fulfill uh, our calling and to fulfill our purpose. So when we look at, um, you know, recognize the grace of God given to you, you will understand that better. Okay. Okay. Uh, did I answer your question? Okay. Okay, we'll continue. Uh, that was uh, for the online students who are just answering a question um, uh, by one of our students. Okay, here. Um, so we look at the recognize the grace of God given to you. Okay. Um, now, in the New Testament, um, the grace of God is used in three different contexts or three different meanings it has. Uh, the first one is divine favor. Okay. Divine favor means divine acceptance, um, how God accepts us each one of us just as we are okay god accepts us just as we are and then we read in ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 it says there for by grace you have been saved through faith and not for yourself it is a gift of god so we have been saved by grace through faith okay so it's it's a divine favor that means god accepts us just as we are okay just as we are we are sinners but it's because of the the grace of god that we have been saved and we receive salvation uh, by grace through 
faith. Our faith and it's because of God's grace. Another uh, meaning of uh, grace in the New Testament and under understanding um, that grace is used and the context that is used in the New Testament is uh, divine character. Grace is divine character of God. Okay, uh, if you read John chapter 1 verse 14, it says, The word became flesh and made its dwelling amongst us, and we have beheld its, his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Okay, so here we see it's talking about the word that becoming flesh, it's talking about Jesus, um, and it's saying that we have seen, John is saying we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. So grace is the character of God. Okay, and the third thing is um, grace is um, also, you know, uh, divine empowerment. But before we look at divine empower empowerment, the Bible tells us in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18, that we need to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible is telling all believers that we need to grow in what? In the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are all to grow into Christ-like character okay that is what god wants from us he wants uh, and the work of the holy spirit in, in us is for sanctification so that we can grow into christ likeness okay so the third um, context that grace is used in the new testament is uh, divine enablement that means divine empowerment okay god empowering us i'll give you an example uh, you know paul writes about a thorn in his flesh Yes, that is some repeated attacks of the enemy that he's facing in his life. And what does uh, Paul tell God? What does he ask God about this thorn in the flesh? To remove it. He asks him to uh, remove it. He asks him to take it away. What does God say? My grace is sufficient for you. What is uh, uh, God trying to tell Paul? Paul is, uh, God is telling Paul that, you know, I'm able to enable you or I am going to enable you or I am going to empower you to go through this uh, throne in the flesh, whatever it is, okay? Um, an attack of Satan, repeated attack of Satan. Uh, God is telling Paul that he'll not remove it, but he's saying, my grace is sufficient for you. That means I'm going to enable you. I'm going to strengthen you to go through um, this so grace is also divine enablement and divine empowerment so three things three contexts that grace is used in the new testament the first thing is divine acceptance god accepts us just as we are the second thing is that it's the divine character of god and the third thing is divine enablement or divine empowerment god empowers us okay uh, if you look at ephesians chapter 4 verse 7 uh, can one of you read that? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. So it says, but to each one of us. That means it means to, each one means to what? To, for everyone. Everyone what has been given? The grace has been given. So every believer has been given the grace of God. And we have been given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So all of us, everyone has been given the grace of God. Every believer has been given the grace of God. And uh, we've been given according to the measure in Christ Jesus or the measure of Christ's gift. Which means God has extended a divine em enablement or God has extended, uh, that means he's you know, uh, giving us divine empowerment. And this divine empowerment or this divine enablement is related to Christ's gift that each one of us has received. So Christ has given each one of us more than one gift. What is the meaning of gift? What is the meaning of gift in this context? The talents, right? What you're good at, your strengths, what you're good at. So it's the same as seed. 
Okay, so your gift is basically what you are good at, the talents God has given you. So here we see that each one of us has been given more than one gift. It's been given to us by Jesus Christ. But it also says that, you know, each one, that different measures of the same gift. Now, for example, there are uh, 16 of you in this classroom here, in-person students. Okay, just say there are 16 of you in this class. And just say all of you have the gift of leadership and worship. Just assume okay, that all of you have the gift of leadership or just assume that all of you, uh, you know, in the uh, online students have the gift of uh, being worship leaders or worship leading people in worship. Okay, so all of you have leadership gifts, but each one of us, you know, have some of us have greater anointing or greater measure than the others. Okay, so maybe Rin has a greater measure of anointing and um, uh, in leadership compared to Nina, okay, compared to Charisma, uh, compared to the others. So it's, uh, are we saying that God is partial? Are we saying that God is partial? No, God is not partial because the word of God clearly states that God is not partial okay that means if he's partial there's some sin in him it's not partial so what is the meaning of you know all of you in this classroom have this just assuming that you have the same gift of leadership or all of our online students have uh, the gift of um, you know um, being worship leaders but you know some of you have a greater anointing greater measure compared to the others so should we get jealous of others because they have a greater measure and greater anointing no, why does God give some people greater anointing, greater measure than the others? Th though they are in, having the same gift. It's because he has given them greater responsibility. Okay, So greater the responsibility, greater the measure of anointing. Okay, But the other lovely thing is that you know God has given each one of us the measure of grace that is just right, that is sufficient, or that is um, more than sufficient for us uh, to fulfill, you know, the calling or the the gift that He has given to us. Did you understand? So even though we have different measures, you know, of anointing, but each one of us, God has given us. Um, uh, the measure that is sufficient or more than sufficient for you to fulfill God's purpose for your life. So be happy. Okay, don't look at others and be jealous, but thank God and say, God, you know, the measure that you have given me is more than sufficient. Okay, is right. It's all I need to fulfill your purpose for my life. Okay, let's look at Romans chapter 12, verses 4 to 6. There are uh, some of uh, some lovely things that we can hear or uh, learn or some good things that we can learn from Romans chapter 12, verses 4 to 6, um, regarding the gifts of God, the functions that we've been um, called to. Okay, can somebody read that, please? Uh, thank you, Rin. So here we see that um, in verse 4 it says, All the members do not have the same function, but all of us have some function. Okay, we don't have the same functions. That means uh, not all of you are worship leaders here, or not all of you will be uh, great leaders, not all of you can minister to children, uh, not all of you can be missionaries, not all of you can, uh, you know, minister to street children. Some of you have the grace to fulfill that. Okay, uh, so we have different um, offices, different, um, you know, uh, um, um, uh, things that God has called us to. Okay, so all of us as members in Christ's body, we don't have the same function, right? Not all of us are pastors, not all of us are evangelists, not all of us are missionaries, not all of us are teachers, but we have different, different functions, okay? So each one of us, but each one of us have a function. All of us don't have the same function, but all of us have some function, and each one of us have a function in the body of 
Christ. Okay, and then he says here that individual members of one another, verse 5. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one and other. So what's the meaning of this? So our functions in the body of Christ are all interlinked, are all interrelated. Okay, we are related to one another. We are connected to one another. We can't be disconnected in the body of Christ. Now my hand cannot say, okay, you know, I don't need the body. I can function by my own. Can it function? No. The, my mouth cannot say, I don't need the body. I can function on my own. It can't. The same way in the body of Christ, you know, all of us have different functions. We don't have the same functions. All of us have some functions and all of us have different functions. But we are all connected to one another. We are all related to one another. And, you know, uh, we need one another. We are dependent upon each other. And then he goes on to say in verse 6, Paul writes and says, having then gifts. Okay. So each one of us, God has given us gifts to fulfill your function. Now, you, you might be asking, what is my function? Is my function being an evangelist, a pastor, a missionary, a worship leader, or a, a children's minister, or a you know, youth pastor? What is my function? Now, you need to find out what your function is. But, you know, one way to find out your function is to know what your gifts is. Okay? So, if you know your gifts or the areas you're talented in, that will help you to know your function. So if you're very good at teaching and speaking, then you can know that you can be a, you know, a preacher, a, a good teacher, a Bible college teacher, whatever. But if you have a heart of compassion um, for, um, you know, for the, for the children on the streets, you see children on the streets, you just go and you take your handkerchief and wipe their, you know, running nose. Uh, which not everybody will do that. It's just your special grace that you have. And you know that, you know, you, through your grace, you will know what is your function. Okay, what function means, what is your plan? What is the plan and purpose God has called you? So the gifts God has given you, the talents that he's given you is to fulfill your function. I hope you're able to understand gifts, function, yes? Uh, or the gifts are given to match your function. So if you find out what your gift is, then you will find out what your function is. Now the gifts are given according to the grace extended to us. Okay, that's what it says here. The gifts are given according to the grace extended to us. That means what? God has given us, each one of us, gifts to fulfill our function in the body of Christ. And it says here that the gifts are given according to the grace. So God's grace is more than sufficient for you to fulfill your function or to fulfill your um, role, okay? And he says in verse 6, Paul says, you know, let us use them. Very important. Once you know your talents, your gifts, doesn't mean you just take it and keep it within you, okay? Once you know what God has called you, your function in the body of Christ, you just don't keep it. Oh, you know, God has called me to be a worship leader. Great, you know? But what should you do? You need to use your gifts to fulfill your function okay so let us use them paul says let us use them use them for what let us use them for what to fulfill your function in the body of christ so you need to use your gifts to fulfill your function let me give you an example here now, for example, uh, just say, you know, today morning I saw two of our Bible college students, especially girl ladies, uh, playing the bass guitar and the uh, guitar, you know, I was ex extremely excited uh, because I was sitting in church on Sunday and I was like, you know, all the men are only <laughs> playing the bass guitar and drums and why not, you know, uh, ladies come and I say, God, wish I could play that bass guitar. I love to play the bass guitar. So I was just looking at, uh, sorry, dear. Karen uh, playing the bass guitar. I was so excited. I just kept looking at her, you know. Now, suppose I look at Karen and I look at uh, Kung, who, were play, who was playing the guitar, acoustic guitar. And, uh, you know, I um, uh, I just am excited and I say I'm gifted in, uh, 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 you know, maybe I want to play the guitar and lead worship, but I don't have a gifting for playing the guitar. Maybe I try you know, um, I tried actually playing the guitar. It didn't work out. I couldn't learn it. Okay. Um, and just say I can't sing. 
Okay, so I don't have the gift of playing the guitar. I don't have the gift of singing. I can sing in the bathroom. I'm just saying, for example, okay. But that's not mean that I say, okay, because I'm excited to play a guitar and I, I love to sing and I can't sing, I can't play the guitar, doesn't mean that I want to become a worship leader. Can I become a worship leader? I can't become a worship leader. So what am I saying? My The gifts I have, I don't have the gifts to fulfill the function of a worship leader. I might like to be a worship leader. I might like to play the guitar. I might like to stand there and sing in the front. But I don't have the gift. And so I can't become a worship leader. So maybe I have um, uh, the gift of um, saying uh, teaching. So I'm teaching in a Bible college. Or maybe I have the gift of relating to children or to youth or to teens. And so I can work with children or I can work with youths. So, you know, just because you like something doesn't mean that is your uh, calling that you have to fulfill. Your gifts will actually uh, enable you or help you to know what is your function in the body of Christ. Did you understand? Yes? Okay. So the gifts God has given us um, uh, or given to me will define my function and will tell me what my function is. So you see your gifts, you know, um, uh, understand what the gifts God has given you, and then you will know what is your calling, what is your function in the body of um, Christ. So, but, and you need to use your gift to fulfill your function. Okay. Now, some things that are given in your notes, um, the bullet points on page number 20, the gifts in your life are indicative of the grace given to you. I will explain this. I'm just reading it out. The gifts given to you are in line with the function God has designed for you to perform in the body of Christ, the gifts and callings go together. That means you want to know what is your calling. Now you've come to Bible college. Your next step is, you know, God, what is my calling? Find, look at your gifts. What is your gifts? You will find your calling because gifts and calling go together. So you know you're called to a particular function when you have the gifts that will enable you to fulfill that function. So if you play the guitar or the keyboard or you can sing well, then you know that you know God is called. Maybe He's calling you to into the function of being a worship leader. Okay, now um, not all gifts. It's given in your notes. The last bullet point. Not all gifts are spiritual in nature. What does it mean? Now, uh, God has given you a gift of leadership. It doesn't mean that leadership gift is only used in the context of the ministry or the church. You can be a leader in your school, you can be a leader in the college, you can be a political leader, you can be a, you know, a, a leader in, um, in the workplace, uh, a team lead, you can be a manager, uh, you can also be a leader in the football team or the throwball team, basketball team, whichever game you like. So it's saying that, you know, every gift that God has given us is not spiritual in nature. Okay, so you can use the gifts of God given to you in the world, but you can, through that gift, you fulfill your the general plan and plan of God. What is God's general plan for each one of us? What's God's general plan for each one of us? That all men be saved and come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Okay, so that's the meaning of not all gifts are spiritual in nature. Okay, so you can use your gifts of leadership in the workplace itself. So if you have the gift of creativity, you might not be working in a context of a church where you design brochures and posters and banners for the church for different meetings and seminars. You can use your gift of creativity in the workplace to design things in the workplace. But through your creativity in the workplace, you can bring glory to God. You can extend the supernatural um, so that when people see your creative art they can even know jesus they can it can influence them it can empower them to know uh, christ okay so how do we dis uh, discover god's gift you're saying ma'am okay forget about full uh, you know the function finding out the function i don't even know what uh, the gifts of god in my life so the how do you know what how do you discover god's gift for your life or how do you discover what talents he has given you Okay, the first thing you can do is experiment, right? I was excited to learn to play the guitar and I tried learning it for one year. It didn't work. And I got a revelation that, you know, <laughs> it's, I can't play the guitar. I just left it. Okay, but I love to sing. So I sing. Okay, I just enjoy singing. I worship God when I sing and I just sing my heart out. But, you know, I can't play the guitar. So experiment. Okay, 
uh, experiment different areas. You know, uh, if you think your um, uh, son is to, um, uh, if your gift is uh, to minister to children, you know, start ministering to children. You know, see whether you can really fit in and gel with them. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, the first one is how do you find, how do you discover God's gift in your life? Experiment. The second thing is, um, you know, sometimes the gifts of God is given to us, but we don't know it's hidden in us. Okay, it's hidden in us. So one way how it can be brought out is by experimenting, trying out. The second thing is through prophetic word. Okay, but you need to be very careful to test the prophetic word. Because First Thessalonians chapter 5 tells us that we need to test the prophetic word that we receive. Now, for example, you know, there's a prophet um, or a prophetess who tells, just say for example, uh, tells a man, Ronald, Okay, Ronald, you are going to give up your work in the corporate and you are going to start a restaurant. So, you know, Ronald is very, very excited. He goes and takes all his savings from this bank. Uh, he starts a restaurant and nobody is coming to eat in his restaurant and his business is not growing. Okay, one month, two months, he's hardly having any um, uh, good uh, income that is coming in. And his wife is upset and saying, you know, I told you don't start the, uh, you know, the uh, yeah, restaurant, you know, test the prophecy. Remember I told you First Thessalonians chapter 5, his wife is so angry with him saying, I'm not going to cook for you, I'm going to save money, you eat in your own restaurant. Okay, and I'm just joking. Okay, so what we need to do is you need to test the prophecies you just can't take every, you know every prophecy that comes in we will see why we need to test the prophecies from god's word we look in later on when we look at you know um, recognizing god's counsel through various people we look at it but it's important that when people prophesy over you that you uh, you know you test it according to god's word and then you wait for confirmation from god from his word and then jump into it okay so we look at ephesians chapter 3 verses 1 um and verses verse 1 and verses 7 to to verse 8 um and we learn various things uh from this okay uh can somebody read that ephesians chapter 3 verses 1 7 to 8 Yes, unsearchable riches of Christ. Thank you. Okay, so here we see that we learn some uh, a few important uh, things from about the grace of God from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 and verses 7 to 8. Uh, the first thing that we can learn from these verses is that the grace of God is always given to you for something. Okay, the grace of God is always given to you for something, which means to accomplish a specific purpose. Okay, for example, here in Paul's case, what was the grace of God given to him to accomplish? To preach to the Gentiles. So he was, he's being, he, he a Jew, uh, Paul, a Jew, uh, is called to minister to the Gentiles. And you know, that was not something that was easily acceptable by the other apostles, by the other leaders. But we need to know that the grace of God that is given to each one of us or to all of us is given to accomplish a specific purpose. And in Paul's case, it was given to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. So sometimes the grace of God can be given to you uh, to minister to the sick or to the elderly, or to the children. You know, uh, once I took our uh, children from All People's Church to, uh, you know, a home here uh, called Otto Raja's home, okay? Uh, I, I think you all might go there and visit that place. Um, all, you know, destitute people, you know, who are homeless, uh, lying on the streets, sick and uh, smelly and, but you know, when I went to that place, uh, I could not just stand there even for, a minute I had such a severe headache because of the smell um, you know because of the uh, I just couldn't bear that place and I was like you know God you know how do these people work here 
you know how does auto raja really pick up you know this man called uh, not auto <laughs> this man called raja who has a auto you know he's when he sees all these destitute people lying on the streets you know sick or with wounds and smelly dirty he brings them just like mother, mother teresa brings them to this home and i say god you know i think these people have special grace okay greater the responsibility greater the anointing greater the measure you know our children of course ministered very beautifully but I, I don't think I had that grace to just stand there and even see that I was uh, I couldn't really um, uh, be there for uh, for a long time so you know for God has God gives us the grace to do some things to minister to the elderly people you know to wash them clean them or maybe you know I know one of our church members at all people's church has a grace of God to minister to children who are these uh, you know construction workers children the construction workers children uh, she started a school for them and she's now branched off into so many schools and you know she gives them uniforms and food and um, uh, teaches them I think that's a wonderful grace of God even though I minister to children I don't have the grace in that area so see each one of us you know God has given us grace to fulfill or accomplish a specific person a purpose which sometimes we don't understand and we wonder how do they really do this I won't be able to do it it's because of the grace of um, God okay so Paul says I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me uh, by the effective working of his power okay so he's saying he became something because of the grace of God okay uh, so the areas in which God has given you grace is the areas you will find God's power working effectively okay so it's important for you to find out what is your gifts once you find out what your gifts are you will find out what your function is and once you are in that right function you will experience the supernatural power of God which is working effectively in your life okay but if you're not in the right function okay you will not experience the grace of God now coming back to the example of um, William Braham okay William Braham he had the grace of God for what to fulfill which function healing okay and we saw that he just prayed and even people with cancer and tumors and everything was healed people who were blind could see deaf they could hear but did he have then when that kind of dwindled down that revival of uh, you know healing revival dwindled down what did he go step into preaching was preaching his function no did he uh, did he excel in that function no he was such a disaster actually he brought about such a lot of heretical teachings that means false teachings because he did not understand the word of god he was not he did not study in the uh, in a theological college he has not even read the word of god and he is not gifted as a teacher remember when they had this revival meetings he used to only do the healing and other people who were gifted in preaching used to do the preaching so you know if you are in the wrong function if i say no i can't play the guitar but at least i can sing i can be a worship leader and i know that's not the function god has for me that i will not experience his power working effectively in our life okay so by the effective working of his power your function the gift of grace and the power of god are all connected okay so the gift of uh, god the grace of god and the power to work effectively in your function is all interconnected so the power of god will flow through your life when you are in your function using the grace of god given to you okay if anything is out of place then the power of god will not help you to fulfill your function so one way you you're not experiencing the power of god will also help you to know that you're not in the right place fulfilling the right function of God are you able to understand yes no all of us all of you with me okay okay so we'll um, then Paul goes on to say in verse 8 that the grace of God is given to me for something so Paul says to me who am less than the least of all the saints the grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ okay so grace was given to preach the uh, preach to the Gentiles okay 
Um, so while God has graced us and given us gifts, given every believer the gifts, uh, you know, we also need to know there are some offices that God gives specifically to few people. Okay, now don't uh, get confused. You know, God has given all of us as believers, He has given us one or more gifts. Okay, He has given us the grace that we need to fulfill that function uh, along with the gift that he has given to us. But there are some offices, okay? We read these offices in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, okay? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, it says, Paul says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Now, these fivefold offices God gives specifically to specific individuals. Okay? Um, again, here God is not partial. Okay, so he gives specific offices to specific people. But we need to know that he's given all of us gifts. He's given us all the gifts to fulfill a specific fun function in our life in the body of Christ or to fulfill our plans and purposes. But he's also given every believer or, you know, um, a few people a few functions in the body of Christ. That is to be an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, and a teacher. So only few of us are selected for these fivefold offices. Okay. Um, so just to end up, you know, your gifts of grace reveal God's potential or reveals uh, God's purpose for your life. Uh, the way God has designed you reveals what you are designed for the gifts the talents he's given you reveals to you what is your function so once you know your function you just don't keep it you use it okay and when you're in the right place in your right function god will give you his um, power okay to fulfill that function now if you found this whole thing very very theological way beyond your head it's all flying above your head don't worry just know this all of us have been given gifts Okay, one or more gifts. Okay, and the gifts God has given us, He's given us the grace to fulfill it. What is the meaning of grace? Divine empowerment, divine enablement. He empowers us to fulfill that gift. And our gift helps us to know our function in the body of Christ. And we are, when we are fulfilling the function God has given to us according to the gift, the grace of God will be evident and the power of God will be evident. That's all. So all what I said in the last 40 minutes is basically just that, okay? Now, uh, some people think, okay, God has given me gifts, he'll give me the grace, and I'll find out my function, and once I'm in the function, God's power will come upon me, and boom, you know, God will just work mightily. So I don't have to do anything. All I need to do is find out my gift. The gift will help me find out my function, and I'll just stay in the right place of my function, and I'll just press, press the grace button, and boom, everything just happens. No. Okay, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, we see what Paul tells us there. It says, Paul tells us, by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace uh, toward me is not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. So Paul is saying, yeah, I am who I am because of the grace of God. It's the grace of God that encounter, encountered me on the way, on the road to Damascus, and I uh, saw Jesus, and now, you know, I have faith in him. Uh, but he's saying that, you know, um, even though this grace of God given to me for revelations, remember, nobody taught Paul. He received all these divine revelations. And he's saying, but even though, you know, I have this abundant grace in my life, I also labor. You know what is labor? It's not just work. It is, it's hard work. A labor is what a farmer does from morning five till evening five. Okay. Uh, those who sit in the office is not basically labor because they're just doing more mental work. But of course, they're working, but that's not labor. Labor is very hard work. So even though God has given us grace in different areas of our life, it doesn't mean that, you know, our life is going to be a wonderful journey. It's not going to be easy. Uh, there's going to be hard work. You have to sweat it out. There are times when you have to, you know, 
press through difficult circumstances, difficult situations. Um, there are times when you have to make difficult choices. You'll have to make, um, uh, you know, um, uh, difficult decisions. There are times when you have to make sacrifices. You know, you can't go for a holiday or you can't go for an outing or you can't engage in an entertainment because, uh, you know, you have some assignment that God has called you to do. So there's a big sacrifice that you have to make. Sometimes you even have to shed tears. You know, you have to even cry. There are times when you have to work harder and longer hours than other people. You know, sometimes we think in the ministry, life is much more easier than in the secular field. But actually, in the you know, we also work sometimes... You know, my days goes on to even 13, 14 hours looking at, you know, we have to enter our time sheet and the end of the time in a week, you know, we have to put in 40 hours, but sometimes I see myself putting 58 hours. You know, it's, it's you know, we think in ministry, everything is easy. You just, you know, you just uh, relax, you just go house with visiting, you just pull up a sermon and you preach on Sunday. It's not as easy as that. So Paul is saying that, you know, we need to labor hard. Okay, but you have to lay when you labor hard, you will experience the empowerment of God that is given to you. And he says, you know, his grace toward me is not in vain. Okay, so God empowers you to labor and work hard. Imagine God empowers you. That means God gives you the power to labor and to work hard. So even labor and to work hard, God gives you the power to do it. So don't be afraid to work hard. You need to work hard uh, to maximize the grace of God given to you. So if you want to put God's grace to maximum use, you have to, uh, you know, labor hard. It's not going to be easy. It's not just pressing a button and shh, everything just happens. The Holy Spirit just comes and takes over and does everything. You have to do everything. You know, of course, the Holy Spirit uh, does the rest. Okay. So that is uh, the grace of God given to us, you know. Uh, so we need to recognize the grace of God, which will help us to uh, know what is uh, the gifts of God. Uh, we need to know the gifts of God so that we know what is a function. Function will enable us to, you know, uh, operate in the grace and the power of God. Okay. The next one is um, another then another um, um, guidepost, a signpost um, for us to you know, uh, know God's will and plan for our life. Um, the, the, the fifth one is recognize the leading of God's spirit. Okay, recognize the leading of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, um, 14 to 16. Okay, because before we move on, anyone has any questions about the grace of God? Anything that you didn't understand? Anything that you want me to explain again? All of you look like, oh my gosh, this is so heavy. <laughs> Feel like it's something heavy on your head. Okay, online students, um, anyone has any questions? Anything you didn't understand you want me to explain again? Arila, Prabhu, Krisha, Samuel, Shivkumar, Nina, I. J Chin, J Chin, right? Did I pronounce that again? Right? J Chin Joel. Okay. Is it clear? Arila, you have a question? You said uh, it's not clear for you. No questions, you said, or it says no for that. Okay. If no, there are no questions, we'll move on. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll look at another guidepost. Recognize the leading of God's spirit. Romans 8, 14 to 16. Can somebody read Romans 8, 14 to 16, please? Thank you, Karen. So here we see in verse 14 that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So what does it mean? It means that we as sons and daughters of uh, God's kingdom, you know, we are led by whom? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads us. The Holy Spirit directs us. 
the Holy Spirit shows us where we're supposed to do, uh, supposed to go, what we're supposed to do. The Holy Spirit helps us to know what is our gifts, our calling, our function. Okay, and verse sixteen it says the whole the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit. So where is the Holy Spirit going to speak to you or guide? Where is He going to lead you, show you, direct you? In your spirit, man, in your inner being. Remember last class we looked at um, you know various uh, references from Psalms and from Proverbs. Remember which we looked about our inner man and we saw that in the inner man, which is our heart, God gives us the counsel, he gives us the wisdom, he gives us the understanding um, and he, uh, you know, he's the one who gives us the passions, the desires and through our passions and through our desires um, and through our feelings is how God, you know, stirs us up is how the Holy Spirit speaks to us okay so the holy spirit speaks to us in our inner man in our spirit man uh, and in our inner man in our spirit man is where the holy spirit is going to testify to us he's going to speak to us he's going to teach us he's going to tell us the truth he's going to lead us in the plan and the purposes of god and all this is going to happen in your spirit man okay we'll um, stop uh, class here we'll take a break and we'll come back after the break Okay, so see you all after the break.